hot, harsh, and constantly on the move. And yet, there's an abundance of small life here, where shifting sands meet the ocean. Bugs have evolved adaptations and behaviors to succeed in the sand. But survival in this merciless landscape is hard won. This buzzing swarm may look like a colony, and a rather threatening one at that. But these sand wasps usually like to live on their own. They've gathered at this particular spot, not to see each other, but for the quality of the sand. It's just the right consistency for building their burrows. With their curved, bristly front legs, males dig a simple sleeping chamber, while female sand wasps excavate deeper, oval-shaped nests, just enough space to lay an egg and provide her future baby with food. And what's on the menu for the young wasps? Flies. Sand wasps are speedy enough to snatch flies right out of the air. Once caught, the fly is immediately paralyzed with a venomous sting. Then, like a bird bringing worms back to its nest, the mama wasp carries the motionless fly back to the burrow to feed her growing larva. And while their larva chow down on flies, adult sand wasps are mostly vegetarians visiting flowers for protein-rich pollen and sugary nectar, and helping pollinate the plants at the same time. But sometimes, before bringing the fly back to its burrow for baby, Mama grabs a snack of undigested nectar from the gut of her fly prey. Mm. Back at the nest, it looks like Mom's undoing all her hard work, by burying her burrow along with her now well-provisioned baby. But there's a method to her madness. Left as is, a simple sandy burrow is an easy target for other hungry insects. They'd see a bullseye, knowing they could find a juicy, defenseless baby wasp and its food. So mom hides the entrance with a behavior that scientists call leveling. Nothing to see here. Closer to the water's edge, a predator patrols the sand. When kelp washes in and the tide retreats, rove beetles are one of the first on the scene. Looking for tasty morsels who got trapped in the wave-tossed tangles and hunting for kelp flies and beach hoppers who have come to graze. Rove beetles are an extremely diverse group with more than 56,000 described species. That's more species than the world's mammals, fish, and birds combined. Sharp pincers on the beetle's head are primed to snatch any small prey that lets their guard down. But despite their weaponry, these rove beetles can't let their own guard down. Hungry birds wouldn't hesitate to snatch one up for a meal. So these beetles tend to be more active at night when most of their predators are asleep. But not all beetles on the beach prefer to move under the cover of night. Some thrive in the sun. A shiny green blur scurries across the front of a sand dune. It's almost impossibly fast. Both to avoid predators and to find food themselves, tiger beetles have a need for speed. If you scale for body size, Tiger beetles run at speeds 10 times faster than Usain Bolt's world record 100 meter dash. Granted, they do have a leg up, or four. Once they catch up to their spider or insect prey, two sword-like pincers latch on and do not let go. These gargantuan jaws allow tiger beetles to capture prey almost as big as themselves. And we're off again. Tiger beetles are such speedy runners that they temporarily go blind. Their beetle brains can't process the image fast enough mid-dash to keep up with their legs. So the beetles use a jerky stop-start pattern in their chases to allow their brains to catch up. Sprint, stop, reorient to target, sprint again. It turns out if you're fast enough, 
you can afford to take breaks. It's tough to survive on the sand, but by adapting and adopting a few unorthodox behaviors, many bugs thrive, even here.